The Nation Network presents Coming In Hot. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Coming In Hot. I'm Brent Wallace alongside Jason York. Uh, as always, the show brought to you by Renfrew Pro Tape. Right, the ones with the green core. They are the worldwide standard in hockey tape, including they invented shin pad tape. Uh, Renfrew Pro. Go to RenfrewPro.com or your major retailers and get uh, some of the best tape around. The ones with the green core. Renfrew Pro. All right, Yorkie. Uh, we are a quarter of the way through the season. It has been uh, an interesting start, shall we say? Uh, I don't know. It's, 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 there's been a few surprises here and there. Uh, we could go over some of the biggest ones, but, you know, I, I, it's, some things never change. Some things never change. Patrice Bergeron just keeps playing. Somehow the Boston Bruins keep winning, but I don't know. I didn't see this with the Seattle Kraken, I'll tell you that much. That's that's one of the things where yeah, it's been pretty yeah. surprising, but lo- a lot of good stories. A lot of good stories for sure. We will we will get to all those, but I just meant in terms of the Ottawa Senators. Um, so much as we call it, hype and hope coming in, obviously a stumble. But, but Yorkie, can we just agree they do play exciting hockey because you have no idea oh. what's about to happen on the ice. Are you not entertained when you watch the Ottawa Senators? Well, how about that? Fin- the, the overtime the overtime winner last game, talk yes. about entertaining. They go, they go from almost turning it over and losing the game to a beautiful – Backhand sauce and Giroux with that beautiful move. Not every game. Here's the thing with the Senators. Every game, with the exception of even the game they got badly outplayed in Florida, they almost won. It's pretty crazy. So that this this team, I'll say this about the Ottawa Senators. They have a fighting spirit, which is very admirable. And I don't care. You, people can say what they want about DJ Smith. He doesn't have structure, all this, all that. One thing this team does do, they play hard. They play very hard, and they compete. And like you said, a very entertaining group of guys to watch. As always, the chat is open. We are live on YouTube. So if you uh, feel inclined and want to ask us questions, go right ahead. We'd like to hear your thoughts on all of this and what you think uh, has been the major storylines going forward. Listen, I don't know if I want to get into the D. It feels like it's constant. We know they need some yeah. help on the blue line. But let's just yeah. – so. Aside from that, we'll all agree that there needs to be some change and some movement there. What we do get, though, is now you see a return of Shabbat, Thomas Shabbat and Artem Zub, and you see what impact they have when they're both in the lineup. Obviously, they were 6-3 and three with them in the lineup, 2-9-1 and one without them. They are the key to everything that happens back on the blue line, obviously. Well, any, it's the old saying, the Senators are better with Shabbat and Zub in the lineup. That's their one-two defenseman. It's what you used to say in the dressing room. Thanks, Tips. Thanks for the tip on that one. But it's, 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 Captain it's, it's the same. Captain <laughs> Obvious. It's the same with any team. You take out your two best E, you take out Norris, you're going to have problems. And, and for the Senators, they're just don't, not deep enough to withstand having injuries and and, and and that's why the record is indicative of when you take Shabbat and Zub out of lineup. You're not going to be very good. Surprise, surprise. So that's that's been the tail of the tape for the Ottawa Senators. Those two are back now. And, and again, Captain Obvious, they're, they're now uh, yeah. winning some hockey games. And, and they've got a – and still, they're, they're still going to be a team. And everyone's talking about them. They're going to be out of the race and by Thanksgiving. I still think they're going to play meaningful games, especially – when Norris Whoa. eventually does get back in the lineup. Like meaningful games to me means you're not out of the race in February or January. You still have a fighting chance deep into the season. Yorkie, they're out now. They're not ma- – it's until you're – yes, but until you're mathematically eliminated, that's when you're – as a player, like, all right, we can't get in, can't get in now. So – I'll tell you what, if the, the mindset of the NHL player, Wally, and you might think the guys are naive, but this is the way an NHL pro is wired. Until until you are mathematically out, you actually think you can get in. And I've been on, I've been on one of those teams. I was on that Ottawa Senators team. We had to win out uh, to get in the playoffs that one year. It, it, it took us to the very last day. We went on this run that was unheard of. And I don't know if you remember that team, Wally. We... 
Perry Pern, our assistant coach, had a little he had a little he had a little number in the dressing room, and it was the exact amount of games, our magic number that we had to win where we thought we could get in, and we just we just did it day by day. And it sounds boring, but that's the way hockey guys are wired. If hockey guys have to think in advance of what's going to happen, it 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 affects everything you do. Um, you just it's it's so boring. It's so cliche. It's, it's when a hockey player says, well, obviously, and you know, and uh, well, that's what guys are. They just, they think in the moment and hey, I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs or anything. I'm just telling you what these guys are thinking. They honestly believe they have a chance and that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Okay. <laughs> I guess. Okay. But, hey, but you, you, I, I, you we, think differently. I think differently. I'm on the outside now. I'm. The chances of them making the playoffs realistically aren't very good, but those guys aren't thinking that. I'm telling you that right now. They are not thinking that. They're just going about their business, playing hockey games, and honestly, they're just happy they won a couple of games. They come home, they get ready for the next yep. game, and then yep. there they go. And it's it's the way you have to live in the moment as a professional athlete. Otherwise, you're going to drive yourself crazy thinking of all that. Listen, I was so bad as a player, Wally. I had to keep myself so busy before a game that I couldn't, I didn't want to think about what could happen because there's so many variables and things that could happen that it's um, you go insane thinking about them. So, okay. Then here's my uh, question for you. Cause they do it in every locker room and that is the, or maybe they don't anymore. They put up the standings in the back of the room. They used to always be yep. the NHL standings. They change them every morning. Why? Because <laughs> if a, you're in 31st just, place, why do you want to see that? Well, it's it, you have your standings board, and we used to have it was uh, it was our massage therapist that used to update it every day, and that was part of his job. It's just well, why I, why do they do a scouting report for every single time you play the same team? Nothing changes. <laughs> it's you've got five coaches, you've got this huge staff. Honestly. It comes to the point where you just need something for people to do because you can only, you can only break down hockey so much and go over it. And it's a lot of people, you have to justify your existence and do things because it's, I used to say this about practice. And this is the biggest thing we used to say uh, um, late in a practice, because if you weren't playing a lot, you'd have to stay on the ice for extra. So you're basically skating around trying to look busy, trying, okay, what can I do now to, cause you've, you, it's just, I'm telling you, man, it's, it's, uh, okay. The standings board, everybody but, has it. It's just part of the thing. Nobody cares. The issue is, and it's not the points. Everybody like it's eight points. It's this, it's that it's all the teams in front of you. So oh, only yeah. one of those teams down the stretch has to have one more point basically than you the rest of the way. And you don't get in that's. And so that's hey. the issue. It's not the points. It is all the other teams in front of you. That's what you have to jump over. That's why it's so tough when you dig yourself a hole. Well, they just, they'll, like an NHL player will just say, hey, well, St. Louis did it. And they don't have to look back. They were in, what was it last place, Wally? They were in last place yep. in the NHL in January. So it's not impossible. And that's what these guys, it's like, here's the thing. If you're an NHL player and you were a kid and you said, you know what? It's like a one in a million chance I'm going to make the NHL, so I'm I'm not just going to try and do it. Everybody says I shouldn't do it, so I'm not. I'm no, not no, going to I try get it. it. So that's think just about that on, for example. What's what? What do you think's more probable? Somebody's son making the NHL or the Ottawa Senators getting into the playoffs. Okay. What do you think? Now, you're, now you're just offline tangents. I'm, uh, Settle down. I'm just telling you. This, I'm telling you. Just no, there's 32 advocate. teams in the National Hockey League. There's a million kids trying to all make the NHL every single year. So, anyway, run I'm the, moving on to more happier stuff. Okay. That uh, is a happy thought. We're, <laughs> I, I, I don't know where to go anymore. 21 games in. So let's compare them to last year. Uh, let's take a look at the offense first. And I think this is a bonus. Like, yeah. we can discuss that they're in 29th place as of today. However... If we compare them uh, to last year and their top five scores, there's a difference, right? Like Drake Batherson led this team in scoring last year at the tw at the 21 game mark. Now, m keep in mind he had played I think 16 games at this point because he got hurt. Uh, the Sens were five, 15, and one, so they're three point they're three more wins than they were last year. Uh, and 
Brady could, uh, sorry, Drake Batherson would now be tied for fourth this year in scoring based on that after 21 games, right? Uh, Brady Kachuk, 25 points. Tim Stutzler, 22 points. Giroux, 20. Dabrinkit, 17. Drake Batherson, 16. It is a much better and more exciting offensive team to watch. No question, Yorkie. No, no question. Just the, the additions. Bring in Giroux, who's been uh, who's been excellent. I think Giroux's Pierre Dorian's best with the summer. Bringing in Claude Giroux, you bring in Claude. Uh, obviously, Debrinkit's come in, and even though he hasn't scored at the clip, people might not have thought he's he's still setting up plays, creating some offense. So, just those two guys alone has has helped your offense, yep. and uh, that that makes enough difference right there. And last year was last year the year. Kachuk started the season late. Was that his contract year? Or was it the yes. year before he came yes. in late? He, no, yeah, it was last, last year, year which so that, is why he was only at 13 points. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. But what a story he's been, Wally, uh, coming in. And we'll get to him because we, I, I got a feeling yeah, we're going to have we'll about 15 that. minutes spent on Brady Kachuk. Uh, because yeah, for sure. He's about to have a milestone game coming up, uh, all kinds of stuff with him. So before we get to Brady, who's uh, I think now tied for 22nd in their National Hockey League or somewhere around 22nd in scoring. Um, Claude Giroux, right, uh, as you just said, scored the winner. 38 game winners now for him. He's – and you brought him up. He looks really good. Like he, looks if, there's a, and I'll say, if there's a free agent signing that's gone really well, uh, Claude Giroux is arguably at the top of the list right now for Ottawa. <laughs> no question. Hands down. And for all accounts – uh, face-offs. How about what they're doing with him right now? He's yep. taking key draws in the D zone and then wins it and then changes right away. I, I I think that coaching staff would like to have a redo on that one game. I believe it was an overtime where they had the defensive draw. and uh, Tyler Mott. They, they, they had Tyler Mott, and I get it. He's a great shot blocker, and they figured he'd get in the lane. But you get a redo on that one, you're sending Claude Giroux to take that face-off and doing what he does now. So you, you, know, you learn yeah. by your mistakes, but I think that's one mistake I thought this, uh, they kind of came back to bite them. But Claude's been excellent, to your point, Wally, um, and making guys around him better. The, the, the value for me for saying whether a player is a good player or a great player, do you make those around you better? And I think Claude has that. I don't think. I know he's had it his whole career. He makes the guys who play with him better. And uh, I didn't know he was this good of a finisher, though. That finish on the overtime winner, whew, what a move. Just so uh, – it's amazing with him, too, Wally, because in a league that's supposed to be all about speed and youth, he just knows how to change his speeds, change his pace, and uh, he's very effective and deceptive when he has the puck. Uh, a couple of things about that point. One is uh, I got to watch him skate this summer a lot more because my kid ended up skating on the ice the same time just at the other end keep in mind they're not yeah. anywhere close to the with same Shelley? level with Shelly? Uh, no Pat Malloy and yeah. I watched uh, the way he just his hands and feet move it was phenomenal to watch him just dangle uh, and I noticed at that point you notice a lot from players when you watch them practice he was one of them that really stood out to me the other thing is and I wish I had it in front of me there was a stretch from like Oh, or mid 2000s to like a six or seven year stretch that he was the leading scorer in the National Hockey League ahead of Ovechkin and Crosby yep. and what like he had r these amazing numbers and never really got the attention. I know he was on the cover of EA Sports one year, but um, I felt that like he was so dominant, but he just didn't get the attention because everybody else is winning cups and doing all that stuff. And so um, Claude Giroux still has it and he's still – He's relatively young. I know Yorkie. We talk about age at this point, but uh, he looks rejuvenated. I, but I'm, I'm starting to wonder how long you can keep losing games and still be happy mm -hmm. and content with the way it's going. You can see the frustration well, sometimes. You can see the frustrations, but I'll tell you, and I'll tell you this from my experience: when you get to come home and be surrounded by friends, family especially he's got young kids that are around their grandparents. It's it's a real nice feeling. I think that's keeping him energized. And also too, this is a Point. young team. When you're, when you're an older guy, and I remember when I was in Boston, I was 37. You really appreciate coming to the rink because you know you can't do this forever. 
And you get that energy. You kind of steal the energy from the younger guys, and you just feel so good when you're at the rink. And you really appreciate it. As crazy as this sounds, Wally, I didn't really appreciate how great it is to be in the NHL until I was in my 30s. Because you guess you, you, wow. you, you know who you are as a person. You have your family. And you just you come to the rink every day, and you really enjoy what you're doing. Uh, and it just... It's like anything, experience, and, yep. and you just kind of figure things out. Then the game really slows down for you. And obviously for Claude, the game's always been slow for him because he's got an elite mind. He thinks he thinks at such a fast pace. But you're, uh, you're, here's one little thing about Claude as well. My two boys used to skate in the summer, and, I, and there's a lot of stars that think they're – not that they think they're too cool for school, but they wouldn't do the things that Claude Giroux does. I saw him on the ice with my two boys when they were, I don't know, 14, 15. Claude was working on his skating. He was doing power skating, and he was on the ice with kids from the age of 9 to 20. And he was in a lineup, and all he cared about was doing his drills, making sure he's getting his edges, and he did it every week. And I'm like, okay, not a lot of guys would go on the ice in, a, in an environment like that, to me, it just speaks to a guy that is very humble and is a guy that doesn't look down on people because uh, most guys will go on the ice by themselves, have like a private session. And I'm sure Claude does that as well. But it, And I jumped on the ice a couple of times too. To, I was doing some work with some of the defensemen and I was just watching Claude. And every single time he did something, he did it to the best of his abilities. And he was really trying to improve his skating. So to your notion of is he going to slow down he's not wired that way I, I think this guy is going to have an extended career because of his work ethic off the ice and he keeps himself in impeccable shape as well so i'm not too worried about about claude Giroux a couple of years from now okay uh is after 21 games your i don't know if mvp is it because it's people just tend to pick whoever the leading scorer is but who is the most valuable player to the Ottawa Senators right now? And I, you can even, like, there's Jake Sanderson, there's Tim Stutzlub. I mean, I know you know who they all are, obviously. Brady Kachuk, yeah. Claude Giroux, Cam Talbot, Thomas. Like, who is it that you would like to pick? That's an easy answer. As much as I, as much as I love Claude Giroux as the person, the player, this team is the heartbeat of Brady Kachuk. Brady Kachuk is the pulse. He's the guy that... He's the leader of this team. Uh, he has, and it's not just about the stats because he has great stats. He's off to his best start as a pro. Yeah. He's going to get, if he, if he continues on this clip, he's going to be around 95 points, give or take. I just watch him play. And as a former defenseman, he's a type of guy that is a nightmare to play against because not only is he skilled, and we've saw that with the with the passes he's made. And we were on this a couple, three, three weeks ago, while you and I were talking about how well he passes the puck. Now you're seeing it. That's another element to his game. I call it a triple threat. He's got skill. Uh, he's physical, and he can uh, he can make plays as well. But it's it's the fact that he makes it hard on the other team's defensemen. You can't move him in front of the net. He finishes hats. He's he's on the body. Uh, he he works like a dog out there. He forechecks. He backchecks. Uh, and it's crazy that he's he's a, he's a winger. So usually a center iceman or your defenseman would be your most valuable player, but I just think he's been that good, and he's he's he is the heartbeat of the Ottawa Senators. He is, and he's uh, man. What what can imagine if the draft would have went a different way and Ottawa had gotten caught Kenyemi? Like, pretty crazy oh. when you think about it. Like it's not like okay. Here's a question. Like then. what what a what a, what a gift that Kachuk went to to Ottawa in, in uh, was it third overall he went yep. third or fourth fourth third eh. So fourth, uh, fourth. Wow. Yeah. So Svechnikov uh, is the leading score from that draft ahead of Brady. Uh, if you had to do it over again, all right, who goes number one? I well, still, Svechnikov. I still think he's, he's, so Svechnikov's put up great numbers. To me, though, it's a little bit of an unfair comparison because he's been surrounded by some players that are in the. I'm going to say in the in the uh, prime of their career where Brady's kind of been on an island a, a little bit. And now you're seeing okay. with some reinforcements what Kachuk can really do. Here's the thing. 
I want to see Brady Kachuk in a best of seven playoff series. You let him loose when refs are letting a little more go. You got to battle for every inch of space on the ice. Every single shift is about wearing other team's defensemen down. I know who I'm taking in a best of seven. It's not even a question. I'm taking Kachuk all day long. The problem is the Ottawa Senators need to get to the playoffs in order to see that. So right. as a, for me to for me to want the team that I know can win in the playoffs, because the ultimate goal is winning the Stanley Cup, I would take Brady Kachuk. I would. Okay. Uh, by the way, top four went uh, Rasmus Dahlin to Buffalo, the defenseman, obviously. Andre Svechnikov, Carolina, Kakaniemi to Montreal, and then Brady Kachuk. Um, well, right, he, so, well, I just want one more, one more yeah. thing on Kachuk. It's it's and he's kind of it's weird, eh? Because in that era where we talk about the Jack Hughes and all these guys that 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 are on YouTube doing stick handling, and they're Kachuk is a throwback player. But when you get to the when you get Completely. to the playoffs, man, when you get to the playoffs, it's those guys you win with. So, anyways, that's why I'm taking Kachuk. Yeah, no, and you know what? And I, as a, I guess, a media guy and someone that watches, love his personality. It comes out. He's not afraid to show yeah. it, which is another thing I think I like about him. Uh, I looked it up today. He's since the 2018 year, 2018-19, he's the only player in the National Hockey League with 1,000 hits and 1,000 shots on goal. Uh, mm-hmm. And the guys with 1,000 hits, like Ryan Reeves and uh, a couple others, don't have the point totals that he does. Like His numbers are phenomenal, as we call him the unicorn. Uh in two games, yeah. so tomorrow night uh, against, I believe it's the Rangers, right? That he will play his 299th career game. Uh, that will tie him with Zdeno Chara and Eric Condra for the uh, 34th most games played by an Ottawa Senator. Um, we just like to make the, the. It's not very often you get to use Peter Schaefer uh, in a graphic, <laughs> so uh, we get to put Peter Schaefer on the board at 315 and number 31. He. He'll likely move up to somewhere in the 20s uh, and tie Antoine Vermette if he plays in every game at like 360 this year. Um, but a couple other things, like he is one uh, goal away from uh, 100 career goals. Um, he's 18th right now at 99 career goals, 18th for the Ottawa Senators. Wade Redden is 17th uh, at 101 goals. And uh, finally, uh, penalty minutes. He needs one more penalty minute for 400 career penalty minutes. Uh, Radic Bonk is 13th all time among the Ottawa Senators at 401 penalty minutes. So he's going to be, I mean, the guy's played four years in the league and he's already moving up in arguably the top 10 to most things. Uh, he is a well, force and he's fun to watch. Oh, he's so fun. And, and you forgot, he's still, he's tied for arguably the greatest record in Ottawa Senators franchise history. Wally can't believe he omitted that one. Uh, he's tied with a very esteemed defenseman 12 shots on goal in a game brady kachuk has the record tied with yours truly i, can't I didn't want to bring it up because i i, <laughs> I did well, Barry, you like you again. continue to hold it all by yourself yeah oh is he's it, gonna is it oh, hard, he's... hard on your shoulder oh god kachuk's coming for me right every time he's he's come close a couple times <laughs> But he throws yeah. everything at the net. He's you know how hard it is to get shots on net from the point. I had to get I had to do it from about 60, 70 feet. He's in the ten foot radius, just jamming away at pucks. Hold on. Back in your day, uh, before they had virtual rink board ads, you guys were always mm-hmm. shooting from the point. In fact, there were mm-hmm. clappers. You don't see those anymore. Uh, there used to be more shots pounded in from the point than I think there are today's game. Okay, then why didn't more guys do it? Well, I don't know. They were just waiting for you. I don't know. I, I didn't play the game. You tell me. <laughs> you know what's funny? When I the, I got 12 shots in one game and not one of them went in. <laughs> talk, talk about the loss why, of averages. I didn't want to bring it up. <laughs> uh, oh, I do. Hey. There's two records in hockey that are never going to be broken. Gretzky's 92 goals and the 12 shots on goals for the Ottawa Senators. I, I don't know. I I will not take money on that bet. Um, it's not good so, money. No. So do you think these two wins coming off this little road trip, uh, How? I'm not going to say quiets it down. How much quieter does it make the Ottawa Senators right now with – 
uh, eight wins right now instead of what looked like it was going to be a, a not a very good road trip. If they lose those two games, something happens when they come home from that road trip, right? Whether it's a big trade, someone gets waived, uh, maybe a firing, something would have ha- something would have happened for sure. Um, I know they have. Uh, it's a little different with the sale of the team, but it takes a lot of pressure off, a lot of pressure, a lot of heat. And now they're they're getting yep. they're getting healthy. So they got their two defensemen and they can you can hang your hat on that, say, hey, we were six, we're six and three with our two best defensemen in the in the in the lineup, which we talked about. So they've got that going for them. And they're you know, was that LA game perfect? No. But the difference is now they're getting goaltending too. They didn't get goaltending during the last probably four losses of that streak. I thought their goalies got outplayed in every game. Now Talbot is outplaying the other team's goaltender. I thought in, in, in that L.A. game in particular, Ottawa gave up five grade-A scoring chances to start the third period yeah. of that hockey game. They could have very easily lost that game. There was a post and about three bang-bang plays in front where Ottawa just blew their coverage again. But that's the difference. We're not talking about it because Cam Talbot made saves, and it's amazing what a, what a good goaltender can do for a hockey team and for for quieting down the noise for the Ottawa Senators. So I, it's it's the twenty is it twenty one twenty two games now they played. For sure, things have quieted down, and uh, big reason for me, Wally, probably injuries but but uh guys healthy but cam talbot for sure yep. he has really delivered the last little while for me and, and good for him because i know like obviously coming in and getting hurt right away was not ideal for him it's not ideal for anybody uh you just get the sense there's some a comfort factor with him in the yeah. net for the ottawa senators and you t- you're the d you tell me 100 100 percent. it's you, you know you can not that you're trying to make mistakes, but you're not playing up tight, knowing that if if you make one, if you do a one gaff, it's going in the back of your net. Does that seem to be happening for Ottawa? They make mistakes, they get scored on, and they get chances, and they would, and that becomes a mental thing. And and uh, that's what Talbot was signed to do. He was signed to come in. They're going to continue to make defensive mistakes. They're a young team, especially on the middle, and that's what Talbot's going to have to do: make the saves where. You're not supposed to make that save, but you make it, and that and that's uh, that's what he, that's what he did, uh, and that's what they're going to need if if they're going to if they're going to at least challenge to get to that eighth spot. Talbot's going to have to continue to go on a heater here, and uh, when Forsberg gets back, same thing. So we'll see. I uh, sh- show me a good goalie, and I'll show you a good coach. <laughs> that's the old saying. Uh, well, I've heard yes, that's a very common phrase. Uh, just as we wrap up the Ottawa Senators, uh, as a reminder, as always, the uh, Coming In Hot Show brought to you by BEI, Bonisher Excavating Inc. Always uh, there when you need them for any of your landscape needs, aggregate needs, uh, also their uh, asphalt paving as well. Uh, competitive pricing, 613-432-1120. Go to BonisherExcavating.com. They're also hiring, by the way. Uh, BEI, helping to shape the Ottawa Valley. Uh, quickly, Yorkie, I'd like to uh, ask you as we get to the quarter mark of the season, or we're going past it, what is your biggest surprise of the year so far in the National Hockey League? Oh, there's a, there's a bunch of surprises. Seattle Kraken are a big surprise. They're in a playoff yeah. spot right now. Seventh. Jason Jason Robertson, what he's doing in Dallas, leading the league in goals right now. Probably how well the New Jersey Devils are playing, though. I, I, I didn't see that coming into New Jersey. Like, they've been incredible. Watching them play, too, because we saw it firsthand against the Ottawa Senators, that is a really good hockey team. So I'll, I'll go with the Devils. The Devils, to me, are probably uh, one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest, most surprising stories so far in the, in the league. All right. I'm going to get – someone's going to snap at me for this. Are the Devils still for real? Meaning we, we know we've seen teams <laughs> yeah, go on know. runs – yeah can they like is it consistent enough and i know they've won 10 straight on the road and they've done they've had a very good start is that are we seeing a team that can keep that up all year long i don't think anybody can keep that pace up all year long the league there's 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 just two there's in the league right now it, it is so hard to win there's just there's not a lot of difference between the top and the bottoms even though the stats say anybody can beat anybody any given night so 
I think you'll see them going to a stretch here, but uh, I, I, I like how they play. They play the right way. Their top players are very yep. good defensively. They're responsible. They're fast. They don't beat themselves. Um, I love the move of bringing in Andrew Brunette, who had a great success as a head coach before he was let go by Florida. So they play the right way, Wally. So as long as they continue to do that, their odds of winning will always be very strong. So, but they're not. I don't think they'll continue at this clip, but I think they'll continue to do very well. They do remind me of a young Sens team, right in the early two thousands, yeah. that played that that very strong defensive game. Had great players, but not superstar no type star. players, I'll say. Yeah. Right? No like they, They've got some t- – I mean, Jesper Bratt doesn't probably get the attention he deserves, and Jack Hughes, is, mm-hmm. I mean, he can play hockey. There's, there's a few on that team, right? But for the most part, they play a team game. I'm going to go with the Boston Bruins. Uh, yeah. They got rid of their coach. Everybody said, oh, Boston's done. They're too old. They are in uh, – they are tops, top two in goals for, goals against, penalty kill, power play – they're at the top of everything. Uh, and I'm surprised. I thought there may there would be a little bit of a let off, a letdown perhaps. There isn't one with them. And Jim Montgomery has done phenomenal. Um, you, I, they you, might be my favorite cup contender right now. You know, I looked at the Boston Bruins and uh, we talked about John Gruden the other day, Wally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy Montgomery has surrounded himself with, I think, the best coaching draft in the National Hockey League. He's surrounded himself with very knowledgeable uh, coaches, all ex-players. Not that you have to be a player to be a coach, but his staff, all of his players bring or coaches bring something different to the table. John Gruden started off, he used to be the D coach for the U.S. National Development Team. Then he went on to coach Hamilton and in two or three years went right to Memorial Cup. Barry Trotz went and interviewed John Gruden and Gruden didn't even think he had a chance to get the job with the Islanders. Trotsy hired John Gruden to come in and coach with him. No surprise though, that New York Islanders and that no name group of defensemen under Barry Trotz went on to become one of the best groups of defensemen in the league without a real star back there. John Gruden is one of the brightest names in hockey right now, as far as defensemen teaching defensemen and teaching the game the way it's supposed to be played right now. So he's got Grudes with the defense. You know Chris Kelly. I know Chris Kelly. He's one of the smartest hockey guys I know. They've got Chris Kelly on the bench teaching their defense, or sorry, their forwards, penalty killing, how to be a 200-foot player, stick positioning on the forecheck, all the little intricacies in the games that Chris Kelly couldn't have been a pro unless he was an absolute genius at knowing what to do the little details of the game and you know who the other assistant coach is joe sacco joe sacco had a very similar career to chris kelly also a guy that was a pk guy a defense minded guy a forward with great speed all three of those guys plus jimmy montgomery i love that coaching staff bob ascends is their goalie coach who's been there forever and he's done a he's been there since i was with the bruins in 2007 incredible goalie coach and look at their goalie numbers right now uh, that staff is incredible and i think they're a big reason why boston's doing what they're doing and it doesn't hurt that you have the experience with those players but i can tell you john gruden's going to be a head coach in nhl one day if he ever gets the opportunity he's that smart of a guy uh who is your stanley cup favorite uh the quarter of the way through this season yeah that's a good question it's tough not to go with colorado uh, can they go back to back? I just think they're so talented, Wally. They got the best defenseman in the game, Nate McKinnon. Great group up front. They're getting pretty good goaltending. I'll go with Colorado. I, I don't see I don't see anybody that's going to unseed them right now if they stay healthy. I'm going to go with Boston. I think defense wins yeah. two championships, and I think that they're built uh, strong enough defensively that they can at least put up a fight. I do agree. Colorado's a very good hockey team. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, so like you Boston said Kale McCarr is the best defense. You said Kale's the best defenseman in the game. Is he your Norris Trophy yep. winner? <laughs> well, I think he missed a few games, so his point totals aren't as high as they should be. But I think in 19 games, he's still over a point a game. It's not all about points for me. I'll throw a few names out for you. I think McCarr for sure would be in the mix. But how do you, how do you not pick Eric Carlson right now? He's got 11 goals. He's got 11 goals. And the difference between the next guy in stats and, and Carlson 
it, it's huge. It's like the year when he won uh, the Norris Trophy. Remember that? Remember the argument was Carlson's got so many points. The next guy is just far behind. I think the next guy's Fox, right? And then uh, so, yes. So, but Rasmus Dahlin has eight goals. Carlson's got eleven. Uh, okay, I watched. I watched. Goals. I watched. Here's the other thing too with 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 picking players. Here's a little pet peeve of mine. How do you how do you vote for some how do you vote for somebody if you never watch them play? And I know I agree how the award it's such a it's such a bad system. We we do it and nothing against our friends in the media who vote for a lot of the major awards, but I'll hear the argument. Oh, I talked to my friend who's covering the team in in uh, in Phoenix or okay, so you're basically putting your vote based on that guy's opinion. So why, like, <laughs> it's so skewed. I honestly believe, yeah, and, don't... and listen, they're never going to change it. They're never going to change it. But if you really want to have it done right, you would have a committee of people make it uh, X media guys. Because the media guys now, you got deadlines. You got to get your stories in. How do you have time to watch the other team's players? You don't. Um, but you don't. to my point. You don't. So don't you even don't. Yeah, you don't. this topic. So, so, for, so for me... <laughs> I, I've seen Carlson play. I've seen enough of McCarr. I watched Rasmus Dalin play against the Ottawa Senators, and I know he has great numbers. Maybe it was just an off night for him. He didn't have a great game, but he couldn't defend his way out of a paper bag. I, I couldn't believe how bad he was defensively that night. Maybe it was just a bad night, but that's the one viewing I saw of him, and I'm like, I can't vote for this guy being a Norris Trophy based on what I've seen, it, albeit it was one okay, game. But- you know what? My third guy would be Hampus Lindholm. What he's doing, what he's done so far in Boston, he's got the best plus minus in the league for defensemen. He's got a decent amount of points. Boston is one of the top teams in the league, and Lindholm's been their best defenseman. So I would go off. I'd go Lindholm. Uh, Jonas I'd go Carlson, I'd go... Uh, Best plus Jonas minus. Siegenthaler Lindholm's two. Yeah. Lindholm's two. Uh, but but uh, so here's why Eric Carlson maybe doesn't win is the fact that he is minus two and everybody else in the top 13 and scoring for D are all plus players. Yeah. But if you, you watch Carlson play right now on the ice when, and I, and I watched him against the Ottawa centers. I've watched him a couple other times. He looks so much better than everybody else on the ice right now. The, what he's he doing, does. like he, he, he does stuff on the ice with the exception of Kale McCarr, no other defenseman in the league is doing right now. And that, to me, that differentiates him from the rest of the pack, excluding Kale McCarr. So right, it's a great story. And obviously sure. I got, we all have sentimental Carlson value because we're here in Ottawa, but what a great story he's been so far. Uh, who is your Calder winner? Well, so I watched McTavish play against against Ottawa. That was my only viewing of Mason McTavish. I watched uh, the Buffalo game uh, when we saw firsthand um, what's his last name again in Buffalo. There, Owen Power. Win. Owen Power. And I, I would so based on the head-to-head matchups, I have Jake Sanderson ahead of both of those players for his impact, his total impact on the game, defense, offense, minutes paid. Um, I would take Sanderson ahead of both Mason and Power right now. So out of the rest, I know some other guys are putting up. Perfetti's got some nice numbers in Winnipeg. There's a few other guys. Well, I can only go off what I've seen so far, Wally. The rest is all just stats to me. So I, I'd take uh, I'd take Sanderson. I think he's been unbelievable. He's been fantastic. Hard minutes, uh, and he's been he's been great. I just don't know if he's going to get the attention and that becomes he one of the issues he we won't. talk about with voting is you need to get the attention and you got to almost start to sell these guys now. Um, yeah. Like, I mean, Matty Beneers, he's got 18 points. He's been pretty good. Um, it'll be an interesting that this one to me, obviously, because we're invested with Jake Sanderson will be the, the interesting award for me to watch this year. So this is the and this is the problem when guys vote for it because the first thing guys do is you peruse the stats. All right, where is this guy in yep. stats? Where is his number? But the, to really know, you have to watch the player over and over again. And how many other defensemen in the league to the and we because we're only doing the twenty one game mark have arguably been the team's number one defenseman to date? Shabbat's been hurt. Zub's been hurt. 
So if you look at these this first little uh, tidbit of games, Sanderson has been in a position more games than not where he's been the number one defenseman for the Ottawa Senators. I don't think the other defensemen, you can't say that about any other D in the league so far, can you? Rookie D? No, I don't think so. So we'll see. You got, I mean, you got 60 more games to go, so it's a lot's going to change. But to, to date, because yeah. that's how that's how the question is worded, it's it's a no-brainer. It's Jake Sanderson. To date. Uh, yeah, and, I, and I'd like to see how it plays out. There's lots still to come, obviously. Um, speaking of yeah. still to come, we have another show to do on Thursday. So uh, we're going to wrap this up and see you Thursday. Uh, enjoy your probably, I don't know if you're still playing golf, but uh, St. Novax, is that where you're daughter went to school is that your son went to school what a, my daughter went to saint of x graduated with a right. business degree there selling real estate now anyone wants to look her up but Does no what wear a the ring? Is, eh? oh yeah great ring one of the most recognizable rings in the world if you google most recognizable yeah. rings the uh saint of x x ring x it's awesome no I great school great spot always got yeah lots of time for them all right uh see you thursday buddy Take care, man.